Facebook graphics was a thing I never looked at anymore, but clearly I am. It's yeah, such a strange time. Yeah. And, yeah, I feel the same way as well. I feel like I want my wrestlers to look like the wrestlers. <laughs> and it's not like I'm being super fussy, because when, uh, when I used to play like um, PS2, mm-hmm. I'd be like, that's good enough. Yeah. Just like the wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm playing it on the, you know, the PS4, the Xbox, yeah, and I'm thinking, wow, you know, it doesn't look anything like them. What, how could you get that wrong? Mm. And I think it's just some simple things like the hair. The hair doesn't move right. It looks like spaghetti. spaghetti oh my hair god! Yeah, I hate and that. Like you said, when you were talking about like the rocking chair didn't look right, I was looking at some of the entrances. And I saw Sasha's entrance as well, and she's doing the whole thing with her hands. But there's no rings on the hands. I'm like, what are you showing me? You're showing me a hand? It's supposed to have the legit kind of rings across it. There's nothing. I'm like, man, if you can't get simple things, simple details like that that any wrestling fan's going to pick up on, then you're clearly not doing your game right. Yeah, and not to mention Lana's comments. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) How'd you get that wrong? (laughs) I mean, even apparently even her entrance isn't correct. She doesn't even do half the things she's doing in this entrance. Um, it's just Never beyond me. Wow. Yeah, no, it's beyond me. Apparently, she was wearing a complete a thing that she's never ever worn before as well. <laughs> <laughs> How, I don't know where they they're getting all this stuff from. Um, so yeah, I've got to say from my end, I don't think I'll be purchasing this one again. Um, this is probably it's got to be what my third or yeah, probably the third or second year of not not buying a WWE game which is so unusual because I am always buying it it's like it's, it's up there with like I always buy certain games every that come out yearly and they are, they've, they've been like FIFA or you know stuff like that but man I, I've just not been interested and I'm such a WWE fan I want a good wrestling game because that would be my ultimate thing but like they're just not they're not kind of selling it to me at all and I know they and and when they ever they do these bonus things and special editions, you know, you're like, you're asking people to spend a lot of money here on, you know, not even a top quality game at the minute. So I, you know, I really don't know where they're getting all this stuff from. I, I'm so disappointed in 2K in a way because 2K makes some great basketball games, and the graphics on that are amazing. Um, the play by play, amazing, but yet. WWE, terrible. Um, but yeah, it goes back to that one, Matt, where it was Renee Young, I think you'll remember. And uh, it was back to you, Carl. And that really oh, weird. Yeah. And it, it was such a big part of the game when you did these interviews. And you knew you were going to see that moment a lot. So, what was the thing they made the worst <laughs> graphics of? That. <laughs> um, I'm interested to see Bobby Lashley on it. Let's put it that way. See what they do with him. But um, no, I don't think I'll be buying it. Matt, will you be giving it any consideration? Will you be watching people play it first and maybe then go for it? Or is it just a no? Well, you know, I, I know a guy that will buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely be trying it out. Yeah. Um, he, he's not too worried about graphics and he's not too worried about gameplay. So that's, that's <laughs> well, you're fine. But... Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, yeah he's going to... I'll give it a go and see how it goes, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I don't think I'm anticipating being blown away by it. Mm. I mean, maybe they need to get like Xavier Woods more involved in the production. Mm. At least he sounds like a guy that knows about games. Yeah, I really do feel like I need to almost sign a deal with a new developer, to be honest with you, and kind of start again uh, with all this. But um, yeah, we'll we'll see what's going on. Uh, one upgrade they have made, Matt, I can tell you, is they actually have got voices on it. And that's something. Well, it's only taken three years. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. Because um, last year, of course, you had to read it to yourself. Bloody ridiculous. Um, okay, uh, next question. Uh, this is from Juan now, which I... Uh, intro- I not, and he's, put, he's from uh, Mexico. So here we go, Matt. Um, have you guys seen much of Pentagon? Um, I think he is yes, going to yes. be a big, big star do you think he could make it in WWE? Um, simple answer is yes, but do I think he needs to go there? Is no. Um, what about you, Matt? How um, how much have, have you seen of him? Because I'm I've been really impressed with him. He's kind of come on the scene oh, in yeah, a big way. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's a great talent. Um, I think 
great talent, and uh, I've I've been impressed with him as well. And I think the times that TNA have had him, he's been the top star yeah. in TNA. Yeah. The times that he's been on their shows, so he's definitely capable of elevating products. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I think the guy's a great in ring competitor, and I feel like he could make him WWE. Except I'm not sure how WWE treat people like him anymore. Like once we saw what happened to Sin Cara, and they made a big buzz about him and said he was mm. going to be great and then they didn't give him what needed to be given and didn't give him the right opponents I kind of feel like coming in as a masked guy you straight away come in with that little mm. bit of a stigma to you yeah. that like, the WWE won't use you right or they'll, they'll only market you to the Mexican audience mm-hmm. or they and they won't push you as hard I, 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 I feel like if he went to WWE it would be a mistake <coughs> Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Um, okay, Stay Lucky is back. Um, sad to see Matt Hardy um, have to come to an end. Disappointed that WWE basically messed everything up on the broken character. Uh, your fault. So, yeah, so we haven't spoke about this, but obviously, Matt, um, you know, God, dear. It's, um, it's been a bit of a sad ending, I guess, to all this. But uh, from what we're hearing, Matt, it looks like it's over. Um, but uh, kind of kind of suppose it had to happen but um, you know disappointed Matt with the end run that he had in the end uh, getting to WWE and it was quite a big thing they come back as the Hardy boys and um, I just wish it had, they'd have got round to the whole broken thing but then when we did see it it wasn't it wasn't much cop was it I mean it was never as good as and you never say this that much but TNA did it better um, in, in their case <laughs> but uh, Shame he didn't go out in TNA, like retire there. I yeah. mean, I know everyone wants to get to WWE to get that kind of moment, but he didn't even get that moment. He no. didn't even get to have that one last great match. In fact, the kind of like promos he was running at the end were pretty terrible. You yeah. know, even Bray Wyatt. Uh, yeah. So that is a real shame. And it's really hard to think about it now when you think like Edge and Christian and the Dudleys and the Hardy Boys, and you yeah. think like Jeff's the only one left now mm-hmm. still competing at that level mm-hmm. um, and he's kind of the one I thought would be like out first with all those high yeah. risks and everything he was taking it's mm-hmm. incredible to think that Jeff still goes yeah yeah no it is you're right um, yeah so a bit of a sad ending there on poor old Matt Hardy but uh, you know have to see what happens uh, I, I've heard he wants to work backstage which you know what I mean if you think how creative he was because I know that he done most of the pro- pro- producing of that character so he probably has got some stuff to offer there so I hope WWE don't just sort of ship him out the door um, if you know what I mean but I'm sure if they do somebody will certainly be picking him up that's for sure um Okay, uh, interesting name this one. Going to take last couple of questions here, Matt. Um, AJ Barr, not landing his name is. Uh, interesting. Uh, who is the best stable? Oh, it, yeah, so we've got to rank these now, Matt. So get ready again. Get your get your thinking hat on. It's on stables. Um, so we've got the Three Birds, Evolution, the NWO, and the Four Horsemen. Um so I've had a little bit more time to think about this than Max. I, I saw this one coming. Um, do you need to know them again, Matt, or have you? You got it. So yeah. for me, uh, this is this is a bit. Well, it's, some of them are not that tough. Listen, I'll probably put Evolution at four, just because they were good, but in a way they were kind of like a second generation four horsemen for me. The way they, um, they they, they kind of just did so many things the horsemen had already done, um, especially with Rick in there, and you know Triple H was such a mark for that. So uh, Evolution Four for me, uh, then the Three Birds. Big fan of the Three Birds, but unfortunately I didn't get to see. You know, I didn't live in that moment, which you know it's hard to say. Um, followed by this is a hard one to be honest with you, because when you think of a stable. It, it, I suppose the most popular one would be the NWO, but then if I was going to say proper faction, I'd probably go with the Four Horsemen. So I'll go with NWO 2 um, and the Four Horsemen at number one. Matt, for you? For me, it's uh, Free Birds at number four. Mm-hmm. Because like, like, much like you, I didn't live in that generation. Uh, and I know Michael Hayes is like a great guy and a great wrestler. They were, the, they were uh, the first guys to use music. I, remember, I know that much. Yeah, there's that to it. And they did invent that innovative rule where yeah. you can defend the 
tag team title for yeah, three yeah. guys you know that's, yeah. that's something about yeah. that so that's, that's great but you know for me they're number four for yep. number three evolution because yep. you know I just that is like my experience of wrestling yeah. you know like Ric Flair was mm-hmm. the guy when I was a little kid mm-hmm. and then you know like Randy Orton yeah. is now like the guy that I've grown up with and seen him all throughout his career mm-hmm. so you know, that's kind of a good memory to have there and of course I, I definitely respect everything the four horsemen mm-hmm. have done so mm-hmm. I put them at number two because yep. like of course that is the ultimate iconic faction but mm-hmm. you know, I've got to put the NW at number one yep. because you know just yet again that there was a time when they were the hottest thing going yeah. like they could do no wrong and like mm-hmm. no matter what they did to on Nitro it sold and it was yep. over yeah it was people were just buying into it and it's the biggest buzz around wrestling that I have like seen at that time you know it was just crazy so for me being in that moment and actually mm-hmm. like just really starting to find my passion for wrestling around that mm-hmm. time you know like that's where I've got to put my allegiance and put it at number one yep fair enough um, yeah I think um, you know the, the reason I went with the horse I think is because you know um, and the free birds people that don't split up every damn second um, that's what oh, I liked yeah. about it the fact they never did that they were a proper group um, nowadays to be a group you have to beat each other up at some point in, in under a year it seems so it's, uh, yeah god bless those old days anyway last question Yanni um, ok so um, he's put um, I've been watching wrestling since Wrestle WrestleMania. Oh, sorry, this year's WrestleMania. Uh, as I am a big fan of Ronda Rousey, she is a big inspiration to all female athletes, and I don't always understand why she changes herself on Raw when she is different at home with her husband on Instagram. And is different on red carpets. Why? <laughs> so I don't know if, if you're a wrestling fan or not, Yanni. But if you've only watched since WrestleMania, I'm I'm kind of got the feeling that you've just followed Ronda into this world, um, in a strange world. So um, if if you think why you're probably sitting at home thinking why is Ronda Rousey doing these things? Um, why is she coming out in a kilt and all the rest of it? Um, is because um, and again this is like telling this is like sort of giving the big spoiler away isn't it but um, yeah there's probably because she's very highly scripted <laughs> that's the only way I can put put it in, in, in layman's terms as I can there really I, I can't explain but yeah I mean obviously uh, it's a shame because if you see Ronda Rousey on the red carpet and she's very confident um, on that and she's she's fine. You know what? She has done a couple of good promos that I've heard. She did like a good one, um, you know, in, on for Natty uh, about Jim Neihart. I felt like that was good and she was confident enough to go out there on her own. But the ones where you blatantly know she is just being scripted is just horrible. Um, and should not be at all done with her. But yes, if if you're seeing a big difference, um, that's probably why. Matt, is anything to add to that? I don't really know what else to no, say. Yeah, I think you got that. I mean, we spoke about her a few times tonight, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah, she's definitely not the same character she was in the UFC. Uh, but you know, as you said, inspirational to to women's athletes out there. I think like most of the locker room in the WWE is. Um, definitely women that follow their passion and definitely women that like to give something back as well like mm-hmm. WWE's charity work is amazing and uh, even when you look at someone like Stephanie like her character on the TV and we've said this many times on yes. our previous shows as well she is nothing like no. her character on the no. TV to what she is in real life she, she definitely has like one of those warm glows about her and she mm-hmm. doesn't she was like the type of boss that you would love to work for, yeah. you know, not on screen, but nah. definitely off screen. Yeah, which probably you know, to to her credit, probably shows you how good of a performer she is because when she's in that ring, you know, I do feel like God, I want to kill her almost. You know what I mean? Like she she does wind me up in the ring. but then like you say, off screen, such a great person. You know, always doing things for charity. The same as Triple H, though. You know, you can say the same things about him look at all the great work he does with NXT and behind the scenes 
uh, which is why it's always confusing with this whole authority thing. But we could go on about that for another hour, so I don't want to get into that right now. But um, yeah, it's it's strange. I wish sometimes they'd just be, you know, who they are on screen, and that would be great because you know she. Would-